What's going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you are all doing well and having a great day. This is my solar pergola as you guys can see. A lot of you have been asking about my solar trailer because I haven't done any content out here in a while. And this is like the first really nice day we've had in quite some time. And as you can see, my shed over there is actually dead in the sun, which is amazing. And it's right around noontime right now. So. I'm gonna make it a priority, not in this video, but in the next couple videos, I need to get out here and start wiring this up. So the panels are all wired together, but I need to connect the wires coming down from here into my solar trailer, because right now, the yield I'm getting from the pergola alone is freaking unreal. It's like over 5,000 watts all day, and I have about 3,000 pulled in here for the time being. Man, the wind is brutal today. All right, you guys can see I got some miners here on the floor, and I don't know if this is obvious or not, but when you're into solar stuff and batteries in the winter, they do not perform well. They actually have an alarm and a cold, uh, like winter shut off right like a sensor that will kill these batteries if they get close to freezing and i had it happen to me once already so that was enough for me so i've had these al zeros on in here literally just running 24 7 no matter what and i have the uh al box 2 here actually running as well to heat this place right you can see i'm pulling what 400 watts right there from this guy I just kind of literally threw everything together to make this work. I kind of threw this door here to keep the heat in so it didn't have to heat the rest of the uh, trailer because the only thing that matters is these batteries staying warm and it's worked out fantastic. The temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit as you can see. Now 71 because I got the door open and Celsius is 22. All right, so purpose of this video is to kind of go over my solar stuff. I want to talk about my next plans, and I actually got to get a unit out here. So let's do that. But before we do so, let's hear a word from today's video sponsor. Crypto Miner Bros is the ultimate destination for all of your crypto mining needs. Founded in 2018, this company specializes in top quality ASIC miners from brands like Bitmain, Goldshell, and many others. Whether you're a newbie or a pro, they offer competitive prices, fast shipping, and easy payment options worldwide. Pay with bank transfer, Bitcoin, or even other cryptocurrencies, no cash needed. The prices you see on their website include taxes, shipping, and DDP to your door, so there are no surprises at checkout. Join tens of thousands of satisfied customers who trust Crypto Miner Bros for their hardware fulfillment, transparent prices, and world-class service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com, link down below. All right, as you can see, I got a bunch of stuff going on in here, and I got my uh, my man Kaiser actually sent me that. It's a Silverado, I think, Z71. I have absolutely no idea. I'm not a Chevy guy, but he sent me this big-ass flag, and I'm like, you know what? That is a perfect blanket for that door to keep the heat in the other side. Now, you can see over here I am pulling, like I said, 3,400 watts or so. I'm getting 5,000 from solar today on just the pergola alone. What in the hell is that noise? Oh, there's a wire in there. <laughs> I was like, what is that? This is a ground wire for the back tail lights that I ended up, uh, oh no, there was actually a dome light right here. I actually unplugged. Anyways, I have all the uh, crypto miners here going, the KS zeros, right? I have the uh, commemorative edition. I got an ultra, I got the pros here. I think I have an OG somewhere mixed in here as well. I got the uh, KS2 light up and running. I got the, I don't even know what this one is. Oh, this is the original AL uh, box right there. And then I have the AL box too on the other side. And I have my jazz miners up and mining away. I got the X16Q, I have the X4Q, and then the X41U. This has a fault light. Why does it have a fault light? Weird. All right, let's unplug this one. See if I could just reboot that. It's gonna take a half hour to tell me if that's working or not. Oh, you know what? Huh. If I just touched the internet, that was probably the issue because it was really loose. Anyways, all right, so plan is my EDG1M that's been heating my basement. I need to get that thing out here and plug it into solar because if I'm getting this much sun throughout the day, 5,000 watts or so that I can utilize, I'm gonna do that for the hours that I typically don't have it on anyways in the basement because during the day I shut it off. It's really only running at night. So I'm gonna do that and uh, yeah, we'll be right back and then we'll go over the solar stuff. And welcome to my shithole. Don't forget, if you guys are interested in GPUs, I'll leave a link in the pinned comment. I am offloading all of my older stuff. That's why there is shit everywhere. But this is the EDG1M that is off. I usually just plug it into grid because 
yeah, I didn't want to not have it running because it's kind of a profitable miner. And to be honest, it was heating my house. But now we have the, man, this freaking unit is heavy as shit for what it is. I have the, uh, what is this one? The uh, AE Box Pro right here running. And this is honestly taking the chill out of the basement before we get out of here. Let's just see. What's the temp actually? 64 degrees. We are at 64 degrees. Nice. All right. So that's good. 64 degrees in here with just a little AE Box Pro running. So let's get this thing out in the trailer, shall we? Oh, so much for the 5,000 watts I was gonna get. The sun is getting buried right now by clouds. I feel like I'm gonna eat shit carrying this thing on this ice. That's half the reason we broke the commercial earlier because opening this door, I did almost eat it. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm gonna put this oh, just right there because I don't have time to rack mount it and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with these mini Doge box miners. You know what, I'm debating whether to sell these. I saw my man DJ has his for sale for like 50 bucks. I'm wondering if I should probably do the same thing. I got freaking seven of them or six of them actually and I got one, one of them is a Sia miner. I don't know which one it is. But anyways, all right, 17. That guy right there, we're gonna plug into that. The power is on. So I'm gonna have to label 17 in my dashboard. So I don't forget when I'm editing this video. That way I remember to shut it off and on because I keep everything off or uh, on rather when I am, uh, what's it called? Nothing's plugged into them for whatever reason. I don't know. I probably just should shut them all off. But anyways, I just got the power onto this guy. Fans are starting to spin. It's going to kick up in a minute. There we go. Nice, and it should pick up the Wi-Fi. I shouldn't have to plug in any internet to it, which is good. I love that this thing has Wi-Fi. It's freaking fantastic. The X16Q also has Wi-Fi, but the X4Q and the freaking X41U do not. So that's a pain in the ass. But sweet that I got this out here. That's going to run on free electricity now. Super excited about that. Obviously, I'm going to clean up this entire section at some point. So that's kind of what I want to talk about now in this video, right? Um, the wall that I have here built to separate the solar section from the mining section. I might end up taking it down or I might not. I haven't really decided fully on that yet, but the solar stuff in here, I think I've decided to take it out of here. And the reason is obviously fighting the damn winter, trying to keep it warm in here. Two, I have a whole nother setup here and all this shit. This stuff needs to come out of here. I'm gonna put this, I believe, this entire setup because this stuff doesn't have any fire suppression built into it and these guys do. So this stuff, the grow watt, I'm gonna put in my shed because that's an independent system and I gotta get those other panels up on the uh, lower part of the uh, pitched roof, which means I won't be able to shovel off my shed anymore in the winter. So I don't know, I gotta think about that. I might end up setting up the uh, poles on the other side again, like I used to have right where the shed is, but regardless, that's like for another day. These guys, I think I'm gonna put them in my basement. In my house, I have a complete sprinkler system in my house, like a 300 gallon tank that if fire happens, God forbid, you know, the sprinklers pump will turn on and put it out, right? It's supposed to save lives. It's a code in this town. That's what I had to do. So we have a full sprinkler set up and with fire suppression in these, I am very comfortable putting this in my mechanical room, okay? So I think I'm gonna put these on the wall, the uh, 6,000 XP's, side by side, shout out the Signature Solar. If you guys are interested in anything solar, by the way, use my link down in the description below. I do get a kickback, but you guys also get some money off. Um, so yeah, these guys are all-in-one inverters. I might just stick them next to each other, wire its own panel, and then that way I can utilize the uh, solar power during the winter time instead of using like my grid power to heat my basement and all that shit because I don't have any heat down there. I mean, I could cut in another zone. I'm definitely capable of doing it, but I just, I don't know. I'm not really up for doing that. I don't want to mess with it anymore. I would rather just run my miners down there. This is what I like to do anyways. It's kind of tinkering, right? So let me know what you guys think about this. Should I take all this stuff, move it into my house? The only downside to this is these batteries, each one of them are over a hundred pounds each. So that's like just lugging a shit ton of weight over into my basement down those stairs kind of sucks and then the other shit part is having to disconnect this entire panel right i mean i do have to add another uh 30 amp circuit anyways right as you can see i'm pulling almost 4,000 watts now which is amazing uh but yeah anyways i gotta add another 30 amp circuit regardless for those pdus so i got a second pdu on the other side the one that i didn't plug into 
for this inverter right here and I still do have to twin these together. I have this guy landed in the panel as you can see but I don't have them communicating together and I don't even have this one wired up with any input from the panels. Like I said that's one thing I do need to focus on real soon. So that's going to be the focus of again the next couple videos or so i have some other things i have to do but i want to get these wired up and figured out the only thing that sucks about this right now i almost just ate shit <laughs> is i have to get the wi uh, the wires into the ground right over to where i want them to be so it's either going to be going into that trailer if i leave this stuff there or if i put them into my house i got to get them under the fence and over through you know a point to get into my house i have to drill through the siding or whatever the case may be but um, yeah, I can't dig the ground right now. As you can see, there's ice all over it. Everything's still frozen. So I would just have to lay the wires on the ground temporarily over to where they need to be. As you can see, I actually still have some of the wires sitting out here from uh, the disconnection that I did of the old setup. I'm not using these wires again. These are actually just gonna be junked, uh, but these are still running into the trailer for now. And yeah, that's that. But anyways, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about me moving this thing into uh, into my domain. I'm kind of nervous about it, but at the same time, I'm really not. I'm excited because I'll be able to utilize the power for my computer during the day and the heat in the winter and all that shit. It'll be nice to be able to uh, lower my electric rate. That's, that's a good thing, right? Or my electric bill, rather. You know, to be honest, there is one more option where I did end up running 10-2 uh, already into this trailer because I had 30 amp circuits right on the opposite side of this wall. I could feed the wire into that and just back feed it into my house because I already have wires coming from the panel in there and then I just have to tap into them and run them to an outlet so I could actually utilize the power in there and then that would make me not have to take all this stuff in the house. Anyways guys, listen, I'm freezing. It's cold as shit out here. You guys have a great day. I gotta close this entire place up. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped the EDG-1M is out here. Now it's next just to get the uh, AE boxes and all that other stuff out here. So have a good one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.